From anatomy to anesthesiology, from pathology to pharmacology, from microbiology to medicine, a one-man resource to the world of health sciences. Welcome to Dr. Paul's Medical Lectures. A practicing physician, Dr. Paul offers you essential insights on diseases afflicting millions of people around the world. For today's lecture, here is Dr. Paul. Thank you very much for tuning to my channel this, if, this evening. Today I want to talk a few minutes about uh, toxic multinodular goiter. And this is a very, very important uh, concept. A lot of people get confused because they ignore the basic differences. The toxic multinodular goiter usually happens in the older patients with the euthyroid multinodular goiter. And the patient presents with uh, tachycardia, heart failure, also cardiac dysrhythmias and many times weight loss, nervousness and weakness. Sometimes they, you see them with the tremors and sweating all over the body. And uh, autonomic toxic adenomas, they can happen in two ways. It could be a single thing or multiple thing. Okay, those are the two forms of autonomic toxic adenomas. When they happen as single, then we call it as plumber's disease. When they happen in multiple, we call it toxic multinodular goiter. That's an important uh, differentiation we need to know. There is the other thing called Joe's Bastos phenomenon. And in that, you see iodide induced hyperthyroidism. When patients take uh, iodine in their diet for a long time, or uh, when they receive radio contrast agents, materials, or drugs that can be ordered on that uh, induces hyperthyroidism, then they develop this uh, condition. And juice pastor syndrome, you don't see ophthalmopathy or dermopathy. Okay. So folks, this is an important thing. Hyperthyroidism is a common thing in toxic multinodular goiter. So when you, this needs to be treated because it has all the symptoms that uh, you see in Graves' disease. Many times we see, actually we use the same treatment we use for the Graves' disease, like methamazole, propyl thyrosol, and radioactive iodine, and surgery. The treatment is uh, almost the same. So, let us first talk about uh, the symptoms. The symptoms and signs you see are basically the symptoms and signs you see in uh, hyperthyroidism. And you see in Graves' disease, if you give iodine 131, it will, the uptake will be very, very fast. But in toxic multinodular goiter, it's not be that intensive. Now the treatment wise, you use, first you have to use methamazole or propyl thyrosine to render this as a neothyroid tank. Okay, then after the medications, use iodine 131. And iodine 131, the uptake will be good in toxic multinodal goiter, but it's not as intense as you see in Graves disease. And when you do the physical examination, you will see that a large goiter. So because there are so many multiple nodules here. So you see a large mass, and sometimes this mass can go substernally behind the sternum. And when you see the labs, you see the suppressed TSH and there will be elevation of serum T3 and serum T4. But serum T3, the elevation will be very, very high. So suppressed TSH, elevated T3, and if you do a radionuclide scan, you see multiple nodules all over. And there is the patchy distribution of radioactive iodine all over those nodules. So the labs are very, very important. And remember, this happens in people who already have euthyroid multiple nodules. 
and as I said, joint-based uh, phenomena or iodide-induced hypothyroidism that also can happen in these patients. But if you take them as a whole, the typical patient will be an elderly female with multiple euthyroid nodules and they get activated. And if it is a single nodule, it's called plomastasis. If it's multiple nodules, it's called toxic multinodular cord. So the treatment is uh, very simple, just like uh, we discussed during uh, Graves' disease. Starts with uh, methanazole, carbamazole, and then you go for iodine, radioactive iodine 131. Then finally, surgery, subtotal thyroidectomy. Okay, so remember those important things in the labs, especially you see reduced TSH, elevated T3, T3 especially. T4 can also elevate it, but it could be normal. So elevated T3, reduced TSH, you see that in this condition. And you see a large goiter. I will take care of it. And uh, that goiter, first you deal with methanazole, propyl thyrosine, and uh, after that, after rendering the nodule as your thyroid, you say you should not do surgery when the patient is hyperthyrotoxic. Okay. You need to first give them methanazole, carbamazole, propyl thyrosine to render them your thyroid. Then you go for subtotal thyroidectomy. Most of the patients end up with subtotal thyroidectomy because in toxic multinodular goiter you see a large nodule around their neck, and it can present, uh, it can give them compressive symptoms. It can have cosmetic effects, and uh, so for those two reasons, many people go for surgery. So hopefully you got something out of this. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thanks for listening. For more medical videos, please visit us at www.drpaul.org and take time to browse through hundreds of health videos we regularly post on our site. If you are preparing for USMLE, PLAB, and other medical exams, make sure you visit our website to browse through our videos explaining the essential points you need to know before taking these examinations. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org. Thank you, and may God richly bless you.